Good morning. Happy Saturday to you. Good morning. Great to see you. Speak to me as you come in. Let me know where you're tuning in from, what part of the world, what part of the city. If you're in Chicago land, thank you for joining me today on Facebook. Thank you. Do me a favor. If you're on Facebook, like, tag, and share this. Help me to do what God has called me to do. And you do that when you like, tag, and share it because you help me reach more people so I can help them move forward like we're moving forward together this week. So thank you for that. If you're on YouTube, you can do the same. If you're tuning in today for the first time and you're trying to figure out what's going on, my name is Sean Marshall. I'm a husband, father, pastor, coach, consultant, and author of this book behind me, Transition Decisions, How to Get Unstuck embrace change and make your next move now. And one of the reasons why I wrote this book is because I recognize that when people come to moments of change and moments of loss, they get stuck. And one of the reasons they're stuck is because they just don't know what to do. The situation that they're moving into isn't like the situation that they left. And it's, it's a new environment, it's a new reality. They are experiencing a loss that they haven't experienced before. They have to be a version of themselves that they haven't been before. And when we have access to information, we can make better decisions. And so I believe that God wants to give you the information that you need to make the decisions that you need to make. And so we've been doing this now for a week. We've walked from how to get a revelation, because in 2024, you don't need a resolution. You need a revelation of what God is up to so that you can respond to where God is working and meet him there. That's where we started. So today is day six. And if you missed uh, the previous conversations we've been having over these past six days, go right to my YouTube channel. You can check out those videos and subscribe while you're there. But today, I believe that God wants to reveal divine strategies, divine strategies. You all, I went to school, uh, I went to college uh, at Indiana Wesleyan University. It's in Marion, Indiana. Um, and when I was in college, I would do that drive so often from my grandmother's house in Chicago to college in Marion, Indiana, that I began to know the route like the back of my head. I knew how to drive through little towns in order to save 20 minutes here and there, pick up the expressway over here. I learned the landmarks and where I could go to get food, get gas, all those different kinds of things. So maybe years later, I graduated from college and a um, pastor friend of mine in Marion, Indiana, Pastor Andrew Morell, invites me to a training with his team. And so I'm excited because it's literally been 10 years since the last time I've been to Marion, Indiana. So I get in the car and I start driving down that road and the nostalgia sets in. I get on 80 and I go to 65 and then I start moving my way further into Indiana. And an interesting thing happens because I have my GPS open on my phone. My GPS starts telling me to take a route that I wasn't familiar with. Yeah, I don't know if it was ignorance, I don't know if it was the spirit of rebellion, I don't know if it was the nostalgia, but I decided that I was going to turn my GPS off and do this trip from memory, okay? And I started off doing pretty good. I said, okay, this is where I pick up this road. Oh, I see that Walmart. Yes, that means I turn here. But then I got to a place where the landmarks I was looking for weren't there anymore. And I didn't know how to get from where I was to where I needed to be. And so I had to turn the GPS back on. And then the GPS corrected me and I started going and then it said, do this. And I'm like, well, no, I mean, I'm here now. I know where I am now. So I turned the GPS off again. Long story short, I didn't show up where I should have showed up when I could have showed up. I got to where I needed to go but I didn't get there when I could have gotten there. I wasted about 45 minutes and I didn't show up where I should have shown up when I could have showed up because I ignored the voice that knew what I did not know. 
You all in 2024, I believe that God wants to reveal some things to you that will help you get where you need to be when you need to be there. God wants to reveal some things to you that can make up for lost time, that can cause acceleration, that will be more valuable to you than resources, that will usher in the transformations that are necessary for your transitions. God wants to give you divine strategies. Type that in the chat for me, please, on Facebook and YouTube, divine strategies, not just strategies. Divine strategies are strategies from heaven. That's the difference between a GPS and an atlas. You can put together a strategy with information that you already know. You, yeah, you can do that. Or you can map your strategies with insights from a source that can constantly update you, that can adjust your route in response to unseen weather events. You can map your strategy based upon an atlas. Y'all don't know what an atlas is. An atlas was those big old books before the back in the days before we had smartphones, right? And you had these big old books and so half the book would be on the passenger side seat, the other half would be on the dash. And the thing about the atlas was you had to trust the route based upon the date that the atlas was published. The Atlas didn't know when roads were closed. The Atlas didn't know when a tornado was coming through. The Atlas didn't know these things. The Atlas didn't know that traffic was backed up and you should make a turn here so you can avoid an accident, right? But GPS can help you know what's ahead so that you can access what you need and avoid unnecessary delays, okay? So how do we get divine strategies? Let's go to Proverbs 24, 3 and 4. Proverbs chapter 24, verses 3 and 4. It says, by wisdom, a house is built. And by understanding, it is established. And by knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. So the scriptures are comparing wisdom to the strategy of building a house. Because you know that when a house is built, Someone comes in, they draw up plans, they take those plans, they gather resources, they gather resources and they build structures. Then the people come in that fill structures and the construction manager is managing a process of building a building based upon the plans that the architect has given to her, right? And so the construction manager knows that you can't put up drywall before you finish electrical because those wires need to be hidden behind the walls. The construction manager knows that before we put down carpet, we got to make sure that the right flooring is, is under that carpet. The construction manager knows that the pipes have to be fully finished before you can install fixtures, right? And so there's a strategy, there's a sequence, there's a prioritizing of action and resources so that we get what we planned for when we planned for it. And so the Bible is saying that wisdom, right, builds a house and understanding establishes the structure of it and knowledge is what fills it so that it is habitable, okay? So what do you need in order to have a divine strategy? The first thing you need is wisdom. It's the first thing you need. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. When you seek God for wisdom for your life, it is an act of trust. It's saying, God, I trust what you know more than I trust what I know. I trust what you know more than I trust the horoscope. I trust what you know more than I trust the advice column. I trust what you know more than I trust social media, right? Um, wisdom, wisdom. God, I trust your wisdom. Wisdom, what is wisdom? It's the ability to see things, but not just to see things, to judge them correctly and follow the best course of action. 
Wisdom is the ability to see things, judge them correctly, and follow the best course of action. So it's not just intellect. Have you ever met a smart person that was stupid? Like, you know, they got degrees and they know a lot of things about a lot of things, but you just look at their life and you just watch them making one dumb, deadly, dastardly decision after the next, right? How does that happen? How do smart people live in ways that are dumb? Because you can have information, but lack discernment. Wisdom is the ability not just to know, but to know what to do with what you know. Okay? Wise people don't just know what's happening. They know what to do about what's happening. So you need wisdom to have a strategy. You need wisdom to know how to evaluate what's happening. Wisdom to see a thing and to not be reactive or anxious because you actually know what you're looking at. Wisdom to be able to tell this from that. Wisdom to know how to choose between this contractor and that contractor. Wisdom, right? Not only do you need wisdom, but you need understanding. Second Timothy 2 and 7 says, consider what I say and the Lord will give you understanding in all things. Consider what I say, and the Lord will give you understanding in all things. Okay. This is the Apostle Paul talking to his spiritual son, Timothy. He knows he's getting ready to be offered up, right? He knows that his time, his life and ministry is coming to an end, and he's imparting to his son. And he's saying to him, I want you to consider, don't just listen to what I'm saying to you, consider it. And the word for consider, the meaning of the word in this text is to apply mental effort, apply mental effort to actually think about this deeply. So if the implication of wisdom is to see things correctly, then the, the implication of understanding is to see things more completely. Wisdom will help you see things correctly understanding will help you see things completely. He says, consider, apply mental effort to what you're thinking about and looking at. Don't be simplistic in your thinking. It is an urging to go deeper, to go further, to chew on it, to process, to contemplate until you can see greater and deeper meaning. So a person with understanding is a person who's able to see beyond the obvious. These are the people who don't just tell us what is, they can tell us why it is. Understanding is the ability you all to deconstruct. And I know that deconstruction is a buzz term right now, right? But deconstruction in a general sense is the ability and understanding is the ability to, in the same example that the Bible uses for building a house, understanding is the ability to take a building down to its studs, to deconstruct it, to when when those home improvement shows, they buy a home, they always start with demo day. And so what they're doing, what are they doing? They're, they're tearing out the drywall. They're removing the fixtures. Why? Because they want to see the actual structure. They want to look beyond the curtains and the drywall and the furniture because that stuff doesn't tell the real story about this building. No, it's when I bust open the walls to see the pipes, it's when I go downstairs and look at the cracks in the foundation and the basement floor. It's going up on the roof to, you know, spot the leaks. It's identifying where the bearing wall is so you can get at the truth of what's really holding this thing up. Understanding gives you enough of what you need to know so that you can know what this thing can handle, right? So understanding and then knowledge. Proverbs 24 and 5 says, A wise man is strong and a person of knowledge strengthens power. So wisdom is the ability to judge things correctly. Understanding is the ability to see things completely. Knowledge is the awareness of facts. It is knowing what's what 
so that you can know what to do with your wisdom and understanding because your wisdom won't be no good to you if you don't know what you need to judge correctly, right? This involves the accumulation of information, right? So knowledge can be a helpful prelude to action. When I know what I need to know, I know how to adjust my actions. And so some of us are trying to implement strategies. We've been stuck and we've been struggling because we've been trying to implement strategies without having the critical pieces of information that we need to know. Now, we know that by faith, sometimes God will call you to do things without all of the information. But then there are times when wisdom will tell you that there are certain pieces of information that I need to have. So, you know, when we talk about Revelation the other day, the wise men in Matthew 2, the Bible says, were warned in a dream that Herod's intentions for knowing where Jesus was were not pure. Herod said, when you find the Christ child, tell me where he is that I might go worship him. God spoke to the wise men in a dream and said, nah, fam, look, don't go back to Herod. Don't tell him where Jesus is. Get up and go back home a different way. So knowledge from God will help you to gain the awareness necessary to see the best way to do a thing. Sometimes you don't need to change your priorities as much as you need to change your process. Okay, Knowledge will help you to be aware of what you need to know. OK, so in 2024, I believe that God wants to supply you with wisdom, knowledge and understanding about the strategies that you need. And that by prayer and scriptural reflection and everything we've been talking about all week, God's going to give you the wisdom, the knowledge and the understanding to know what to do, how to do it and how to move. Now, let me be specific with you and I'll let, I'll let you go. I, I don't know all of what God wants to do in your life, but I know a few things, right? I know that God wants to give you a prayer strategy. If you know anything about me, you know that prayer is the only reason why I'm here. Somebody prayed for me. There's so many things that God has done in my life that only happened in prayer. So prayer strategy is God, how can I stay connected to your mind and to your voice and to your spirit so that I can know how to make my next move? How should I be praying into my next? Right? I can't just pray perfunctory prayers in 2024. I need wisdom to know how to engage the mind of God. I, I, I can't pray just so I can be able to boast about me. Oh, I was in a prayer for an hour this morning and the Lord was, was such a good time. No, I need a prayer life when after I get done praying in the morning, I'm in the car talking to God on the way to work. I'm picking up my daughter and I'm like, God, you know what? Let me tell you something else. God, I need a prayer life. I need a way with God. I need a strategy where I'm not just running my laundry list of things off to God, but I'm able to contemplate and hear what God has to say. I'm able to pray into my deliverance and healing from the things that hurt me from my past. I'm able to pray and deepen my knowledge of the scripture so that I can pray God's word. I need to pray so I can know how to deal with the spiritual realities behind the issues that I'm facing because this is a natural, this is warfare. So I need prayer strategies that can help me know how to take authority and challenge wicked powers. So I believe that God wants to give you wisdom, understanding, and knowledge so you can develop a prayer strategy, but not just a prayer strategy. I believe God wants to give you a people strategy. In 2024, God wants to give you a people strategy. There's a book by a guy, Dave Sullivan. I think it's Dan Sullivan. Who, not how. Some of you all are trying to figure out how to do things. And you need to be really trying to figure out who. It's not a question of how, it's really a question of who. And you need a strategy for connecting with the people that God would send to you to change your life. You'll notice in the Bible that there is a pattern. Often, when people in the scriptures had problems, 
God often sent them a person. God responds to problems with people. If people need deliverance. God sent Moses. People needed deliverance again. He sent Esther. People caught up in idolatry. He sent a prophet, Nineveh. Right? He sends Jonah to Nineveh to help them to repent before the destruction comes. Right? Jonah goes to Nineveh because they, they need to repent of their wickedness. He says, you know, when the people need to be free from the law of sin and death, guess who I'm going to send? I'm going to send myself in the person of Jesus. God, the prayer here is God, send me people. Grant me the wisdom, the understanding, and the knowledge to know how to connect with people who can help me make their next move and who I can help make theirs. Maybe you actually don't need a business card and a website right now. Maybe what you need is just the quality, the quality product God gave you. And someone who God grants you favor with will be your sponsor. Maybe you don't need more money right now. Maybe you just need somebody who can help you figure out where the money you had went. <laughs> Maybe you need a team to bring strengths that you don't have. So I believe that God will give you a people strategy. And then finally, I believe that God wants to give you a prosperity strategy. Yep, I said it. God wants you to prosper in 2024, and he's going to give you a strategy to do it. I did not say the prosperity gospel. That's a false gospel. Any gospel that says that you need stuff to be blessed is a false gospel. Any gospel that says that you need to give and lay money at somebody's feet so you can be blessed is a false gospel. You're already blessed. You need a strategy to tap into the blessing. And I don't know why we're scared to talk about prosperity. We we go from the false gospel of the prosperity gospel to the other end of the spectrum where we think that the broker we are, the holier we are. Get that mess out of here. Some of us are struggling way too much financially. And we cannot engage with kingdom building because we're too busy applying for benevolence. And I don't say that to cause shame. I say that because I believe that God wants to shift us and give us strategies for provision. I love that when Elisha encountered the widow woman who only had oil, I love that Elisha, the prophet, didn't say, you know what, let me sell you my Jerusalem oil for all your best love gift of $9.99.99.99. You can have this prayer shawl and this prayer shawl. You lay it over your house. No, he, he gave her a strategy. He said, what do you have? Now, take what you have and do this. And when you do this, go sell it. Pay your debts and live off of the rest. God wants to give you a strategy to give you enough resources to get out of debt and live off the rest and follow God and be free to follow God. Not, I'm not talking about excess. I'm not talking about opulence. I'm not talking about gold toilets and raising money to buy planes. I'm talking about the freedom to do what God puts you in the earth to do. And prosperity, by the way, looks different for some of us. For some of us, prosperity looks like we need more time. You're fine with money, but you're broke in time. You don't have enough time. You're too busy. So you need to prioritize. Some of us are prosperous in time, but we're poor in community. We don't have friends for the journey. We don't have help. We don't have partners. We don't have mentors. So we need to prosper and get what we need so that we can be who we are. And I believe that God wants you to have a strategy. You're not gonna be lacking in prayer and lacking in people and lacking in provision, but heaven is going to give you the strategies, the wisdom, the understanding and the knowledge 
that you need to shift your life to the next level. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us. Help us to develop a prayer strategy. Help us to gain the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding to stay connected to you and to your move. We don't want to miss the move. We don't want to miss your presence. We don't want to neglect what can come to us by way of silence and contemplation and stillness. We don't want to neglect the discipline of spending time with you and hearing from you and being formed in prayer. God, help us to have a people strategy. You said one can chase a thousand, two can chase 10,000. You said that a threefold cord is not easily broken. Help us to see the people that we need to be connected to. And God, I thank you for a prosperity strategy. I thank you, God, that it is your will that we prosper and be in good health. And so, God, I pray that you would prosper your people in 2024. Give them strategy so they can leverage what they have to get everything that we need so that we can do what you've created us to do. Be who you've created us to be. Live the life you created us to live in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You're going to get a prayer strategy. How should I be praying into my next move? You're going to get a people strategy. Who do I need to connect with? And you're going to get a prosperity strategy. Because you're not going to be broke for the Lord in 2024. Goodbye to that, right? Follow me on YouTube tomorrow night. Listen very carefully. We won't be here. I know tomorrow is day seven. We're not done. Tomorrow, instead of 7 a.m., mark your calendars for 7 p.m., okay? We're going to go live at 7 p.m. PM. Okay. So day seven is at 7 PM. Okay. Don't forget. If you come looking for me at 7 AM, you won't find me. 7 PM tomorrow night. We're going to conclude the series. I'm going to give you some next steps so you can move forward. God bless y'all. Have an amazing day. Take care, share, and subscribe.